follicular lymphoma is the common, commonest indident non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and it's a germinal center B-cell lymphoma. Um, having said that, a lot of the patients that we treat, they, we treat them with combination chemoimmunotherapy, but patients relapse multiple times. Um, and we've not had any good therapies that have emerged since rituximab. So what we did in this study was to um, examine patients um, by sequencing them to see if we can um, unravel new biological targets. And, and overall what we found was there is a specific gene called RAGC which is present in about 20%, up to 20% of patient follicular lymphoma, which is very exciting because this is a potentially new biological target that, uh, that we can direct therapy towards. So nowadays when we, you know, we've improved the technology quite a great deal, um, we now use next generation sequencing technology um, and this really allows us to look at the, at the tumour in, in greater detail. And so what we do is we use something called exome sequencing which allows us to look at the majority of the coding component of, of, of a patient's tumour. Um, and this allowed us to identify this particular gene called RAGC that was mutated in, in this proportion of patients. So it's, it's quite an exciting time because um, this technology is really improving our understanding of the landscape, the genetic landscape of the disease. Yes, yeah, so, so what we found, and much, much to our surprise actually, so we screened just a cohort of five patients, and in these five patients, four out of the five had mutations in RAGC, and this gene has, has never previously been described or attributed to any particular cancer type. And what was quite interesting, we, we looked at other lymphoma subtypes, and this was very rare or absent in the majority of them, so it seems very unique for follicular lymphoma for reasons we still do not know why. In the last few years, we're beginning to get a better understanding of the mTOR pathway. So we know the mTOR pathway is important for, for tumor growth and tumor survival. Um, but this pathway depends on quite a lot of um, factors, and particularly things like nutrients, like amino acid. So the RAGC component really fits into the amino acid arm of the mTOR pathway. Now, in normal cells, what, the, what RAGC does is it binds to a partner called RAGB or, or, or A. And what it does is it allows um, M, the mTOR pathway to, first of all, sense that there's enough amino acid in the cell um, and turn on the pathway. So in other words, if you're a cell that doesn't have enough amino acid, you shouldn't really be turning on the pathway because you're nutrient deprived. But what we found in follicular lymphoma are that the mutations in some way bypass the need to, for, for amino acids. So you can essentially continuously turn on the pathway, the mTOR pathway, um, without having amino acid present, suggesting that the mutations were activating. What's exciting, I guess, about this data is that in follicular lymphoma, for example, we have not really developed any new um, targeted therapies. The fact that the mutations are what we call clonally represented, so they're in the majority of the tumor, it's present in a lot of the disease events. Um, it means that, and the fact that they're activating the gain of function mutations, there are obviously a number of mTOR inhibitors already out there. And we can begin to see now if these RAG C mutations can act as potential biomarkers for which patients might be sensitive to mTOR inhibitors. So I think it's, it's quite exciting data because it means that we might be able to stratify our patients better with the use of this potential biomarker. Well, I think it'll be for certainly a proportion of the patients because of course not all the patients have the RAGC mutations, but, um, but I think that we hope that would be the case.